it's not my job to make you perfect. It's my job to love you and to show you what it looks like to be somebody who knows how to repent and to grow and to gracefully handle change. Welcome to Mommy Space. My name is Brianna Bernhard, your hostess, and I am a new mom. I selfishly created this podcast to get some advice and inspiration from the moms in my community who are doing amazing things while raising their families. I've realized motherhood is hard, but knowing I'm not alone in this call makes all the difference, and I hope you feel refreshed as you listen. Welcome to the tribe. Welcome back to Mommy Space. This is Brie, and today I am here with the lovely Clarissa Webster. Um, Unfortunately, the very beginning of our chat got cut off due to some technical difficulties, so I'm just going to give a little intro to who she is, um, kind of where she's at in life, and then we'll just dive into where our conversation picked up. So here it is. Clarissa is 31 years old and is a mother of count it, five children. Amazing. Four of which are little boys, ages 10, 8, 6, and 4. And she's got a little girl who's two years old. Uh, She and her husband have been married for nearly 12 years, and they've moved around quite a bit. Um, They're currently living in the greater Nashville area of Tennessee, where they've been for a little over two years. And since they'd moved a few times before, they decided that they wanted this most recent move to be different. So get this, they gutted a school bus and turned it into an RV and drove it out to Tennessee, parked it at their friend's homestead, and about two months later, their daughter was born in the bus. Can you believe that? So crazy. I remember seeing pictures of their transforming the bus and getting it ready to go. And then once they moved out there, it was just a crazy, awesome journey. So we'll have links to her Instagram. You can go back and look at pictures and stuff. It'll be really fun. Anyways, so where were we? Oh, yes. Her daughter was born in the bus. They lived in the bus for a total of 11 months. And then they moved into a little rental house in the country on a plot of rolling, partially wooded land. And they're still there today, raising chickens and ducks and kids and enjoying the beauty that surrounds them. So yeah, that's just a little brief look into the life of Clarissa. Also, I think it's fun to note that the reason I know about Clarissa is through her mother, Cindy Rethmeyer, who is a uh, mentor and friend of mine and has been a great um, source of guidance in my life. Um, So yeah, very, very grateful for her mama and for the heritage that Clarissa has passed on and now shares with us in this episode. All right, we're going to pick up where we left off in our conversation, talking about uh, she and her husband and how they met and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I always knew that I wanted to get married young, and um, there were people that I actually really looked up to that kind of had a problem with that and um, encouraged me not to think that way, but I just, it was just something really deep in my heart. I knew that that would be the way that it was, and so I tried to stay open to that, and lo and behold, I met my husband when I was 17, wow. and yeah, I knew, I just knew oh. that that was it. Um, I don't want to make it sound like, you know, too kind of fluffy and no, no, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> whatever, yeah. but it was, it was really one of those moments in mm-hmm. my life that just felt like everything really became clear. Like it was very mysterious, but it was clear that he was an important yeah. person that I really needed to give time to. And, yeah. um, within, you know, days I was, crying to my mom because I met him when we were visiting New York City and so we were flying away and I was crying in her arms that I was sure I was supposed to marry him no but I didn't know how it was possible because we lived so far away from each other yeah it was really powerful I just was very compelled so um anyway he ended up returning you know his feelings were the same and Mm. he uh it was not for like six months until we figured that out but we ended up getting married by the time I was 19, almost 20. And yeah. And we hadn't planned to have kids. We kind of did the, the five-year plan that seemed really popular, (laughs) or at least we thought we were doing that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh Um, but you know, God had a different 
plan for us. And we ended up pregnant, I want to say six months after we got married, Wow. Um, which honestly was, was what I wanted. Yeah. You know, I, my heart was really longing for that. And, Aww. um, my husband wasn't totally convinced, but <laughs> yeah. I, we always laugh because we had actually been talking about like we came to this agreement. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe we'll try next year. And we figured out after we found out that I was pregnant mm-hmm. that we actually had that conversation, like probably as I was, like as oh, the embryo was being gosh, fertilized. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. We're like, wow, that's uh, kind of strange. Uh, um, that's so, awesome. And we obviously we haven't looked back since and we yeah. just continued in that path wow. and we've had a, a child every two ish years. Wow. So that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> now today um you say you homeschool all your kids, right? Um yeah. So how does that look for you? Have you did you was that kind of included in wanting to be a mom? Did you did you homeschool when you were young or um like what did that look like for you? I was homeschooled. Um, I went to school for eighth grade and half of ninth grade only um, because my parents always gave me the option. You know, they always said, uh, basically, this is a cooperative experience. Mm. Like we we're not going to force you to do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to do this, you have to put the work in. And so, you know, I was I don't know, rebellious or feeling like I wanted to show that I could handle myself. And so I wanted to go to school. I I mean, honestly, first it was that I went to this art school that was awesome. But then I ended up going to a public school for half of a year. And halfway through ninth grade, I was like, okay, yeah, I think I want to go back home. So I went back home and that was awesome. Um, And so I, I think without really realizing it subconsciously, that was always included in sort of my um, idea of what, what it would be like to parent um, and raise my own children. Mm-hmm. So it has been a really natural transition for me. Mm-hmm. And I feel really blessed by that because I know that a lot of homeschooling moms really feel kind of in the dark and mm-hmm. alone. And so it's it's such a gift to have, re- to be able to reference what my mom did wow. and how she exposed us to really beautiful literature wow. and, you know, art and um, things that I feel like your average, my average peer didn't yeah. get to have. So yeah. I feel really blessed by that. And it's, it's given me tools for how I school my kids. Mm. Um, but there are still so many questions and sure. so many things that I feel like I fail at. Wow. Um, but at least, you know, it's a start. Yeah. So, yeah, that's so cool. Um, yeah. okay. So I really like to talk about, um, like passions, like mm-hmm. passions that we as mothers have, like oftentimes it is our children and, and raising them. But I wonder, like, do you have any other like places in your life, things that make you come alive um, that kind of fuel being a mom? And how does that work into your daily life, too, if so? That's a great question. And I I've been thinking about that mm-hmm. a lot. Um, I think what is really lovely or what I consider really lovely about my particular situation is that everything that I love to do, Mm. I get to do as a mom. Um, I often talk to my husband about that because Mm. he's a, he's a musician and, um, and, but you know, it's not an easy thing to make money in. Right. So it's always the, the fight to, to just work and, he does an amazing job at it. He's such a hard worker, but I often say to him like, gosh, I'm so lucky because I, everything that I love is, is part of my my daily life. And I get the choice to incorporate that. And I know that's really rare. Um, so yeah. So like I said, I mean, I grew up loving all those little silly domestic books of little mice families. And so, um, I, and I've always loved to read and draw and write and spend a lot of time, you know, contemplating and just being, um, in nature. Mm -hmm. And so that, that stuff is, is easy to do in a way, Mm -hmm. um, as a mom and Mm -hmm. as a homeschool mom. And, um, so much of what I love to, I like, you know, I love to bake bread and gather wildflowers and cook soup and drink tea and (laughs) read poetry. And those things I can incorporate every day. I don't have to fight that. What I would say though, is that 
while those are my interests and my loves, um, I would say that my, that being a mother doesn't necessarily fuel my zest for those interests Mm -hmm. as much as it kind of puts them in their proper place. Mm -hmm. Like, so being a mother really humbles me and it reminds me that while I do get the option to invest my time in my interests and my desires, they don't necessarily come first and that's okay. And I, I find that when I remember that, like when, when I remember that what's more, what is so valuable and important Mm -hmm. is my role Mm -hmm. as a mother Mm -hmm. that, um, then I can properly enjoy those things I love to do. But Mm -hmm. if I'm like so focused on it and I'm grasping, I'm like, I, I haven't been able to sit down and have a cup of tea and peace and quiet and read poetry and bake that bread. That's been, you know, my sourdough has been, my, my (laughs) starter has been sitting there, you know, waiting for me to make a loaf and everyone's getting in my way. And I have to remember that, you know, it's, I only get to enjoy those things and really, um, feel the, the joy Mm. of the process of just kind of the daily practice Mm. of carrying those things out. If I remember that ultimately my role is mother and that's a good thing. That's such a beautiful thing. And I have to opt into that, That's you know, and that's where, it, it frees me to enjoy those things more, I guess. I hope yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's, no, that's so wonderful and a really beautiful way of putting it. I think um, it's easy to, like, at least from what I've seen in our culture, to, there's there's so much focus on self um, mm. and f- fear of, like, losing self once, like, yeah. motherhood is, is imminent or whatever, whether mm-hmm. you chose it or not. Um, mm-hmm. But actually, I... This is going to be kind of cheesy. I totally posted this um, (laughs) quote by C.S. Lewis earlier today, Mm -hmm. like on the Mommy Space Instagram. (laughs) And it was, um, children are not a distraction from more important work. They are the most important work. Yes. And I I love love that. that. Yes. I, I, to be honest, like I hadn't heard it until just a couple Mm. weeks ago. And it's just been like resonating in my spirit as I'm pursuing certain things in life with my husband and we're both like raising our baby and, you know, want to have more kids. And just remembering that um, is uh, grounding, I think, for me at least. So I I mean, that's what I hear when you're when you say Mm -hmm. those things. And yeah, that's so beautiful. Absolutely. I love it. (laughs) Um, Okay, so how would you say you stay inspired like in the day to day with raising your kiddos and, um, and schooling them and all of that? Um, and what are some ways that you take care of your heart in that process as well? Well, I would say there are a couple of places I get a lot of inspiration from. Um, my, I really draw a lot of strength and courage from the lives of the saints, Mm. um, and the early church fathers, I feel like they, we, we kind of think of them sometimes, or at least I feel as if I have in the past thought of them as sort of this removed Mm. sort of like perfect Mm -hmm. (laughs) persona, like way back in time that wouldn't be able to relate to now. Mm. But I feel like, you know, when we're, when we're seeking Christ and trying to live according to his commandments, we, the the truths that we find are universal and they're timeless, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I get so much inspiration from just the truths that have been passed down through the ages, through the church. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I I would say my main, the main thing I've learned from them is that my life is meant to be a life of voluntary, joyful service. Mm, And that means that it's not oppressive. You know, it's not oppressive to be a mom who is constantly, constantly giving and really very rarely receiving, Mm, um, at mm -hmm. least from the people she's giving to. (laughs) We receive in other ways, but (laughs) they don't don't really focus a whole lot on giving back. And so I just, I find that that really gives me... um, I wouldn't say permission, but just, I guess, just a sense that I can pour myself into it and not, and not think that I'm cheating myself. Yeah. Wow, um, that's good. Yeah. Cause, cause it's, it is, this is what we're called to, yeah. you know, when we, yeah. when we become mothers, parents, we are, we are, we've sacrificed ourselves. Yeah. We've laid ourselves down and said, it's you before me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, um, and that's, 
but like I said, it's voluntary and it's joyful. Um, so I, I think because I don't, I don't look at my life as my own, mm-hmm. that really helps me to stay on task, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and to stay focused. That's good. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's really important to me. And so I try to spend a lot of time reading about, you know, different saints and, and a lot of times, um, one of them, it's like one of them will speak to me specifically. And I realized, you know, I really need to be spending a lot of time reading about that, that particular person's story. Um, and so that's been really lovely. Wow, that's awesome. And yeah. And then the other place that I find a lot of inspiration is from literary mothers like Ma in the Little House series or oh, Marmy in Little Women yes. or Joe in Little Men. I, okay, so they are such a good example. I'm firmly convinced that when we need to figure out what the right thing is to do in our lives, we just need to look to a literary <laughs> example. That's so great. <laughs> yeah, it's so lovely. And, you know, a lot of classical literature has um, a great wealth of faith behind it. Yeah. So it's it's a fairly reliable place to look for yeah. virtue. And, um, I find that the literary mothers are incredible examples of kind, gracious, industrious, wise women who are devoted to their families, but aren't non-persons, you know, they still have an identity, Uh uh but they, but they are fully devoted. I think that's such a beautiful example. That is so cool. I just got chills. (laughs) I love the way that you described that. I think that's so beautiful. I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to pick up some of those books now. I read some of them when I was younger, but that's, uh, yeah, really cool. Yeah, it changes when you're older. When you're in that place. for sure. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It's very powerful. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm trying to remember the second thing that you asked. Oh, just like taking care of your heart, which it sounds like that is probably one of the big ways you probably do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge part. Um, I... I think also I would add, um, prayer is Mm -hmm. a huge Mm -hmm. part of taking care of my heart, you know, going to church and being in community and, um, remembering that uh, I'm not alone, you know, that we're fighting this fight together. Um, and you know, also I know this doesn't apply to everybody, but for me, um, the sacrament of confession Mm -hmm. is huge. I used to think of it as like a scary kind of (laughs) thing where, you know, you're in trouble, Yeah, (laughs) but, (laughs) but it has been such a beautiful experience of just kind of unloading Mm -hmm. the burdens of my sins and, um, getting wise counsel and finding wholeness as a result of that and going forth with this sense that, okay, I can let that go. Mm -hmm. Don't look back. Mm -hmm. We actually, the priest actually prays over you and says, have, having no further care. Wow. You know, you basically, he's sending you out, like, don't think about that stuff. It's time to move on and be healed and be renewed. So that really tends to my heart. Um, and uh, you know, then of course there's things like writing and just trying to center myself and remember who I am at the core of who I am, Mm, you know? So I, I, one other thing I would add that I really feel like in this day and age that we don't really put a whole lot of value on physical work. Uh And I think that when we're, when we're stressing or when we're having a hard time, Mm -hmm. that it's important to remember that physical work is almost always the antidote to depression and the life of monotony. Yeah. Okay. So what would you give as, as an example of that? For you, like. Well, for me, I would say, you know, I might be sitting on my bed mm-hmm. journaling, which sounds like a really lovely thing, right? But yeah. I might be journaling about a struggle that I just can't uh-huh. figure out. Uh-huh. You know, maybe I'm just finding that I'm constantly grumpy with my kids and I am, you know, I'm kind of berating myself like, gosh, why can't you just be a better mom? And mm-hmm. why can't you do this or that? Or maybe I'm feeling oppressed by the you know, the day to day, same thing every day. Cause that's hard. Yeah, yeah, but sure. when I get up and I say, all right, it's, it's, that's enough, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to get anywhere mm-hmm. by thinking about it and being frustrated. Um, sometimes you have to come to a point where even in your prayers, you say, okay, it's time to move on. Mm-hmm. And so getting up, making my bed, washing that's the good. dishes, you know, doing some work outside, taking care of the animals, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, any kind of physical thing I think reminds us or at least 
can remind Mm -hmm. us that monotony doesn't really exist. That's Mm -hmm. not a real thing. That's really more of something that the enemy uses to keep us Mm -hmm. from moving forward. Like a mindset almost. Yes, absolutely. That's so good. Yeah. So that really takes, it helps me to take care of my heart and my, Mm. you know, my soul. I need to be reminded that I can always get up and do work. And then that Mm. is like, that breaks the monotony, you know, that breaks the idea that we are just these like little robots going through the daily thing. Well, probably breaks some of the power of feeling like you're trapped too, like feeling stuck or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. That's great. I love that. Um, yeah. Okay. So you mentioned writing, um, and, uh, you have a blog, right? Like at least I've read a little bit on like what you put on Instagram and it's so beautiful. Like you're such a wonderful writer. (laughs) Um, just kind of a side note. Is that like something that you are updating significantly these days and, and can like our listeners go check it out if they want to? They can. Um, I, it's sort of new. I did have a blog back when I first was a mom and it was, I was very active on it. Mm-hmm. And I came to this place where I was like, I don't know anything. And <laughs> I am misleading all these people oh. and making them think that this is the answer. So I'm just going to stop. And it, of course, now I see that really when we feel that it's important to just press on because yeah. we, we need each other. Right. Yeah. But at the time I was afraid of all that I didn't know. And so I stopped. And so just recently I, I felt like, you know, I suddenly am in the role that, um, other people were in when I was a new mom and I needed help. And, and if I needed them and they fed into uh, my growth and Mm -hmm. my process, then I have to be willing to be that for people now. Um, yay. That is such a heavy thing to carry. (laughs) It's so hard because I feel like, gosh, yeah, that I do need to be available, Uh but I still don't know what I'm doing and I don't want to lead anyone astray, but I, you know, it's of course just, I think we just draw strength from each other and I need to be willing to do that. So I am trying to be consistent with coming up with more posts but um oh, I have to battle my my self-doubt so sure. well don't people we all? are welcome to, <laughs> yes people are welcome to check it out oh, and good. I will I'm going to be doing my best to oh, update it good. fairly frequently so well I think it helps yeah. that you you even saying like and being vulnerable vulnerable about saying I don't know everything like this is my process I think helps yeah I think that is like the biggest thing Um, I, Mm -hmm. at least from what I've found and like what I'm drawn to, um, when I am needing help or advice is like the moms that are super vulnerable and honest and like, here's where I'm at. Like, this Mm -hmm. is kind of what it is, what it is. Um, it seems to be the most helpful and, um, encouraging anyways. So yeah, I appreciate that. (laughs) Um, okay. So I like to ask about mom guilt. Um, Mm -hmm. if you've heard this term before, this was new to me when I became a mom and, um, (laughs) I just kind of, yeah, wanted to hear what your thoughts were on that and, um, how you kind of combat that if you feel it. Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I would say guilt is my middle name. (laughs) It's one of my huge struggles. I, I think that when I consider that idea, the idea of guilt, mom guilt specifically. Um, I honestly, I would call it for myself. I'll call it a vice almost because as much as I hate it, I revert back to it so easily Mm -hmm. because it's familiar Mm -hmm. and it's Mm -hmm. easier for me to feel guilty Mm -hmm. than to proclaim truth and change my habits. You know, like I, I would, we talk about how awful it is. Right. But because it's, it's safe, like, we're, yeah. we're comfortable there. Uh-huh. It's, I would call that advice. And, yeah. um, and, and the reason that's important for me is because it, it takes me out of the, the mindset of being a victim of this yeah. guilt and instead yeah. helps me to, to start moving forward. So, so, um, let's see, I, I would say that I overcome it for, uh, by using a, a question, asking myself a question that, Actually, I learned from my aunt. She, just as a side note, is she's been a huge blessing in my life. She has five kids as well. And her youngest is a few years older than my oldest. So she had just kind of finished as I began. And she's been such an important 
part of my inner process. She's been so encouraging and wonderful. So I've had such a a wealth of wisdom um, Mm. that I could tap into with her, and I still do. Um, And one thing that she taught me when I was going through a particularly difficult time where I just felt like I was doing everything wrong Mm. is she said, you need to ask yourself, am I a good mom? And she said, (laughs) <laughs> what does good actually mean? Let's mm-hmm. talk about that. Mm-hmm. Do I feed my children? Mm. Do I clothe them? Do I protect them? Mm-hmm. Do I love them? Well, yeah, mm-hmm. I do. Mm-hmm. So if I do those things, then I'm a good mom. Yeah. That's the answer. Yeah. The answer is yes, I'm a good mom. I mean, she helped me to see that that was good. That's a good yeah. starting point. Obviously, we would like to be better sure. than good. Sure. <laughs> but... But it's a lifelong pursuit. Yes. So good is a great place to start. Yeah. We have to be okay with starting there and saying, mm-hmm. at least there's that, you mm-hmm. know, and, and whatever my downfalls are, whatever the things that I do repeatedly, yeah. I at least have this foundation of, of love and care for them. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that has been such an important thing for me to remember. And then in confession, Anytime I confess my feelings as a mom, which Mm -hmm. is, you know, every time, (laughs) um, my, my priest reminds me of a really important truth that I feel like goes along with that, which is my kids don't need a perfect mother. Mm. They need a mother who is willing to acknowledge when she's wrong, ask forgiveness, and then keep working on doing better. And I think that applies to as a mom, as a wife, Mm -hmm. as a friend, as a daughter, you know, we just have, we don't need to be perfect. We just have to be willing to say yeah. we're not perfect yeah. and try to do better, you know, yeah. get back up. So however that looks, you know, for it. me, sometimes it's yelling at my kids. Sometimes yeah. it's, um, not being good about staying on top of the things that need to get done mm-hmm. and, and having that affect everyone else. Sometimes it's just, you know, thinking that I've somehow missed the mark on, an emotional connection that they've needed from me, you know, whatever it is, it's like God has grace for us. So we have to have grace for ourselves. That's right. So so good. Very, very wise words. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, cool. So, um, before we kind of wrap it up, I also love talking about legacy, um, and what you think about when you hear that word and, and what you would want to leave, your kids as a heritage or legacy um, once you're gone? Like, what does that look like for you? Well, I think this might not be the most beautiful sounding (laughs) idea of a legacy, but I really want my kids to know and really believe and embody the idea that their lives don't need to be cutting edge or Mm -hmm. interesting or notable or world changing in order to have value. Wow. I, I want them to be unconstrained by the trappings of modern culture. I want them to know how to let go of their egos. Like kind of that thing that social media tends to feed into where we feel like we kind of have to curate a life that isn't really our own. Yeah. And I want them to be comfortable with living simple, Mm beautiful, but also ordinary lives and to be okay with that, to not be, you know, um, to feel like, gosh, what I'm doing isn't enough yeah. or, yeah. um, I, there's other people who are doing so much better, but to see that like God really works in the small quiet mm-hmm. life, not that big and beautiful isn't, you know, big and kind of more notable isn't sure. good. It's just that most of us don't live that life. Right. Most of us are ordinary people. And, and I think our, our generation has sort of, we, we've really lived under this idea of like, go out there and make it happen, you know, seize the day. Um, I don't know. And like pursue the thing that Uh matters and, you know, do everything, everything you do should be something that you love. And I, I think at the core of that, there's the idea that, yeah, we should be we shouldn't be settling for something that isn't lovely, good, you know, true and beautiful, but, but I think it's manifested itself in something that's kind of become unhealthy. And I just, I know it's only going to get more intense with technology and sharing, you know, oversharing. Um, and, and I want them to grow up in the midst of that because, you know, Uh we can't, 
we can't live live in a bubble, right, you know, right, we have totally. to be a part of the world. Yeah. But I, I want them to feel that there is value and beauty in a life that is quietly lived, mm-hmm. you know, where they work hard, but they love their family mm-hmm. and, you know, love what's good. Mm-hmm. I, I just really want that for them. That's actually super refreshing. Um, and yeah, I don't know, at least for me. I just like took Hmm. a deep breath listening to you share that because that's so um, valuable. Yeah, I don't know. I don't even have words for that yet, but thank you for that. (laughs) That's so good. Um, Oh, I'm sad this is almost over. This has been so nice. Um, But yeah, I like to wrap up with some kind of fun questions um, more for like my own sake because I like to yeah. learn about different things from to the moms <laughs> I talk to so the first one would be is there a product that you've been loving for yourself or for your kids that you would not want to live without at this point in your life okay so I am <laughs> my answer is probably going to be really weird but um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was thinking about things that we use and Mm -hmm. what we're what we really need like on a day-to-day basis and um so I'm sorry that this is weird but in my family (laughs) we're like we're really we make lots of food you know Mm -hmm. I'm I pretty much cook like all three of our meals every day and we try to eat you know, healthy, good, yes. whole food. And so oh. one of the things that I just absolutely could not live without is mm-hmm. my Lodge cast iron skillet. <laughs> nice. That's a great I, answer. I just feel like every family should have one yes. because it's amazing and it makes great food. And um, we, we started out with a 12 inch. And as we okay. had more kids, we got the 15 inch, which is gigantic. Wow. But man, that is been, it's just been like such an amazing tool in my kitchen. So I highly recommend it. (laughs) Nice. We have a 12 inch one, but I have to be honest, I'm kind of intimidated with using it because it's like a lot of work, I think, right. To like keep it good. And, but I think I just need to like learn how to do it and just stick to it because I've heard so many good things about them lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people are intimidated by them. And I, I think, um, I always think the same thing about like baking sourdough bread like those things mm, yeah. these things that have been happening for yeah for forever that's true. are the reason they've been happening for forever is because they're so easy oh, <laughs> but that's it's a good point it's, e- <laughs> it's easy to feel overwhelmed and intimidated and I was definitely there but I would not go back so yes right. highly recommend that all righty sweet I'm gonna have to get some <laughs> tips from you then <laughs> um cool and then do you guys have a favorite holiday family tradition that you share each year Yeah. So my very favorite holiday tradition is our Easter service and celebration. Mm. Um, It's different than what I grew up with, but what we do is we gather at our church um, in the late evening, the night before Easter. And yeah, it's, it's awesome. And we have this very kind of quiet um, contemplative vigil service that then becomes as midnight approaches the celebratory Easter service. And suddenly all the vestments are white and the candles are suddenly lit. And it's just this, it, it, I could never do it justice explaining it, but we stay out, um, until the wee hours of the morning, because after that, we all, everyone has brought food and we feast, um, at the church together. Oh my gosh, I have chills all over. (laughs) That sounds so beautiful. It's so lovely. And then of course we spend the whole following day. We sleep, you know, super late and then we just, we get up and we eat more. (laughs) It's wonderful. It's such a great way to celebrate. So that's a really precious holiday. And I, of course I grew up thinking, Oh, Christmas, you know, I love Christmas. I still love Christmas, but, um, but I love when I talk to my kids about that. They are like, oh, mm. we love Easter. We call it wow. Pascha. I'm like, Pascha, of course, that's our favorite, <laughs> you know, because wow. you get to feast and, you know, yes. and then, of course, the next day after we've slept in and feasted, then we all join together again later oh. in the day for another potluck feast. And so it's just, it's very sweet to share that time with friends and family mm. and yeah. That's so, so cool. I've not heard of that before. And I, I feel it. like I would love Easter even more having something <laughs> like that that includes so yes. much food. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. It's a big food reason I do most things. <laughs> um, that's relate. so cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, cool. And then last thing would be a piece of advice you'd give a new mom. Okay. Um, so there are so many things that I think, um, I wish I could go back and tell my younger self, Mm. but I actually chatted with a good friend about this, this thought because I was, I was feeling a little bit overwhelmed by all the things that I thought I would say Mm -hmm. to myself. And we both kind of, we just, we discussed and kind of went back and forth a little bit. And finally I realized, yeah. Okay. So the main thing Mm -hmm. that both of us wish, and she's a mom of three. So um, together, <laughs> we were agreeing that the thing that we would wish that we could do is go back. And of course, this would go to any new mom, but mm-hmm. go back and tell ourselves, you don't need to make your kids perfect. Mm-hmm. And I think we we don't realize we're doing that sometimes when we're new moms, right? Because we yeah. are just like, oh, we just need to do the right thing. And like, w- whether that's sleep training or yeah. co-sleeping or baby wearing or not baby wearing or, you know, planning out their day or not, we're, we're trying to, I think more than trying to just, you know, survive. Yeah. Sometimes we don't realize that we're actually trying to sort of mold them into something. And, um, and it, and we feel like it reflects on us, you know, and that mm-hmm. continues as, as we get older and we have toddlers who are, you know, talking back or <laughs> screaming in our faces while we're mm-hmm. in Costco or, um, oh, you know, <laughs> picking their noses or yeah. my husband has a great story where my, my son, <laughs> after I had my, um, I'm trying to think of who it was. I think it was after I had my fourth, he, he took my older three to church. Mm-hmm. It was the first Sunday while he was there by himself. And my third son stuck his hand in his diaper and no. pulled it out with poop all over no. it. You know, like, <gasps> yeah. So oh like my that happens, gosh. right? And we, it's wow. so easy to, I mean, I don't know about you, but in those situations, oh. the first thought sometimes that will come to our minds is like, oh my gosh, I have to take care of this because yeah. this looks awful, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and, that's obviously a silly thing, right? Like we can clean the poop off and move on, but our kids get older and they take on habits Mm. that aren't lovely and they do things that really make us feel like it's a reflection of who we are. Mm. And I think that if we could get a grasp on that when they're little, you know, when they're babies and we see like, gosh, you're your own person. It's not my job to make you perfect. It's my job to love you and to show you what it looks like to be somebody who knows how to repent Mm. and to grow and to gracefully handle change. And Mm. it's, yeah, it's just, it's so much more than, than creating a child that reflects well on us. Mm. Um, and that sounds brutal, but I, I totally have done that. And I wish I had had someone say that to me, you know, like, Hey, stop, projecting yourself on them stop trying to make them not you and stop trying to make them better just let them be and Mm -hmm. love them show them what that looks like yeah Um, so that would be the the biggest thing that I could I could think of and I'm Mm -hmm. I appreciate my friend who helped me process that through because Mm -hmm. when she's when she said gosh you know I wish I wouldn't make my wouldn't try to make my kids be little perfect beings who aren't anything I don't like about myself and are everything I wish I was, I was like, Oh wow. That is, that just hits me to my core. That is so real. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We really have to fight that. So yeah, that's, That's that's a big one. Well, I will take that for myself as I, (sighs) um, battle wanting to make sure my baby hits her milestones and uh, you know all of that stuff yeah. whether she's yeah. yeah that's definitely a refreshing and yeah. um, wise perspective so and you, you know what we have to we have to have grace for ourselves right yeah. like i think i i don't want to make anyone feel you know like oh gosh i've been doing that i'm terrible but oh no yeah w- we have to have grace for ourselves right. and realize that we're like we're always going to be healing yeah. from whatever we've experienced and whoever we are. And so as long as, as long as we can remember that, like grace for ourselves and grace for our kids, that's 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 so huge. Well, I was just thinking even earlier today, like not to mention like stuff is changing constantly. Um, Uh and like for, for me, like I love routine, um, and love things being in their place and, you know, (laughs) that helps me function. Otherwise, like my emotions can sometimes get out of whack, which is probably a whole other thing I should look at. But, um, (laughs) but just knowing like 
everything's going to change. Like stuff is always going to be changing, but where can I, where can I land? Where can I, um, take comfort? Um, and that is knowing they don't have to look like me. They don't have to be perfect. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So that's really good. It's hard. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. But I guess like, I guess it's really a good thing though. Like if I'm taking it with, um, okay. If I, if I do recognize myself going there, it's a mm-hmm. check almost for my heart and to to say like, hey, what's what's going on? Like, what is it about myself that I'm struggling with or not li- loving even? Um, Absolutely. So Absolutely. that's good. That's so important. Yeah. I, just to kind of add to that, um, mm-hmm. something that has been just hitting me so hard is um, recently I heard from my priest this analogy mm-hmm. that was so so freeing. And mm-hmm. I feel really goes along with that. And he, he was talking to me and a group of women at a book study about the idea that we look at our lives as these sort of linear chronological mm. um, progressions. And what's really important is to realize that it's, it's less chronological and linear and more like the rings in a tree. So mm. as we grow, the rings kind of grow around us. Our, our years grow around what's already wow. there. So what was in there in the beginning, it doesn't pass away. It's just within us, yeah. which means that all, you know, whatever places we experience trauma or yeah. sadness or even happiness, mm-hmm. they're all there. Mm-hmm. And, and when we live life, because this is just as humans, how it is, mm-hmm. we will, it will encounter things that will, it's almost like someone coming along and, you know, sticking a, an ax into that tree, right? Wow. You you might only get to the to the third ring from the outside, uh-huh. or you might get all the way into that, you know, that second ring from yeah. the inside. But so so at any point, something in us could be tapped, yeah. and and it could hurt, uh-huh. you know. And uh-huh. so we have to we have to realize, okay, that's why that's why I'm reacting this way. And I think yeah. sometimes with our kids, mm-hmm. they do something that hits a chord in us that hits that one ring, you know, Mm -hmm. when we were 12 and we did this thing or when we were, you know, eight and we got in trouble or whatever. And it, if we can understand where that's coming from, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we can handle that without putting it on them, you know, without making it our kids problem that they're not performing the way we want them to and say, Oh, that's speaking to something inside me. What is that? There's a trigger there. Something's going on. Yeah, I love that. What a great way to like, look at it. Absolutely. And it gives you so much more grace for yourself, right? Like yeah. I was saying, you have to, you have to be um, merciful to yourself and what you're going through mm-hmm. as if it was somebody else, like your friend, like, what would you say to your yeah, friend if totally. they were going through that? You know? Oh my gosh. <sighs> I had somebody tell that to me um, when I actually, I was working at an anthropology, like, but it was like my first job. And um, one of the women I was working with said something to me and she was like, um, what would you what would you tell your best friend about like her outfit um, or, or mm-hmm. like what, you know, just essentially like speaking to yourself the same way you would yeah. speak to your best friend? Because typically Absolutely. it's going to be with a, a lot, lot of nicer. kindness. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. Some, <laughs> that may be different for some people. But for me, it was like, oh, OK, that's yeah. a good point. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. This has been so good, Clarissa. Thank you so much for <laughs> oh, taking the time welcome. to do this and offering up these beautiful words and moments with me. I'm so appreciative. Thank oh, you. Thank you for asking me. I'm yes. happy to share. Yes. And um, just for our listeners, if they want to go see you and your family, you're on Instagram, right? Yes. Okay, cool. And so what is your handle again? What's the... It is Mother's Hearth. Okay. Okay, cool. We'll add the links just in case. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, I can't wait to share this. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode featuring Clarissa. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with her. 
I just even editing this episode again was just feeling so overwhelmed by her words and insight and wisdom and I'm really excited to hear what you guys think about it so um, be sure to message me on Instagram and Facebook at mommy space if you enjoy any of these shows in particular Uh, leave us a rating and review on iTunes that helps significantly get the word out about this show um, and grow this little community I am just plugging away um, at trying to get these interviews for you guys so it really helps when I get some feedback and thank you to those of you who have done so so far it's so rewarding seriously so so great awesome guys well I am looking forward to connecting with you again I hope you have a wonderful week remember you are loved you're doing your very best and you are enough see you next week mama Mm -hmm.